Hello, Booktube. Hello. It's, it's, it's Rose again. And, and Tilly again. <laughs> and um, we're together to do this because once a month we do... Discussing drama. Discussing drama. And this month, being August, um, is Women in Translation Month, as you may know. And so uh, we decided to look for a play by a woman in translation. And the one we picked was by Yasmina Reza. And she's a French playwright, so it's translated from the French. Um, and the translator was Christopher Hampton, so we don't get the bonus, the bonus of it being a female translator. Probably <laughs> <laughs> not. But, but Christopher Hampton, 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 sorry, is a, a respected playwright in his own right and has translated many, many plays. So you would expect him to, to be able to do yeah. quite a good job of translating. Yeah. This. yeah. So, so in theory, this is a quality play. With a quality translator. Yes. Yeah. With numerous, winning numerous awards oh, in French and English. Molière Award in French and the Olivier Awards in English and, yeah, yeah. top rated stuff. So what? We're a little bit perplexed. <laughs> we're, 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 we're just sort of slightly underwhelmed. Yeah, yes. and amused by, yeah. The, by the high acclaim. Yeah. And because um, it's, it, it's described as a dazzling comedy, um, on the blurb and it is funny I mean I found it I found it funnier than you did yeah it didn't make me laugh out loud which even Mrs Inchbold from the 1790s <laughs> could make you know I, I'm I'm relatively open to laughing out loud yes. at things yes. um, that I'm reading yeah but this didn't really have that sparkle for me I could see moments where I thought this is supposed to be humorous or this yeah. could be humorous depending on how it was acted yeah but it, yeah it fell a little bit it didn't. It didn't make me laugh. It, it didn't. It didn't make make you laugh. I. I was. I. You know how sometimes in in plays they'll tell you the cast that has played it in a particular produ production. And the the this edition was for the two thousand and sixteen um like a revi revised translation for the two thousand and sixteen yeah. production at the Old Vic in London. Um in two thousand and um the actor playing Mark is Paul Ritter and I find him very funny as a actor um yeah. and um ivan is played by tim key and again he's actually a comedian or comic actor yeah, and, so and you could see so i could i could and and, and 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 the, the other character is played by rufus seward who's sort of quite adaptable and i so i could imagine if i pictured paul ritter Playing. Should we explain what this play is actually? Let's about? explain it. Yes, <laughs> it's probably not that well known that you yeah, actually know what we're talking right. about. Yeah, we're um, talking just wittering on yeah. because it bemused us a bit. Yes. So it's about three men who've been friends apparently for years and years and years, yes. and the fifteen years 15 specifically. Years, it says. Um, although it doesn't actually explain how they became no. friends, which is something that you do have to wonder about um, sometimes. Yeah. Um, so it's about these three friends, and it, the play starts with one of the friends, Serge. 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 Yes, Serge. Um, buying a painting, a work of modern art, and yes. he spends a huge amount of money on this painting that... 100,000 euros. If, you, if you're if you not a connoisseur of modern art, is basically a white square. Um, yes. No, 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 no. It, 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 there's, it's there's a white square. colours. It, it's got, it's got yeah. three faint diagonal lines. You have to see it at the right time of day. And you can, yes, that. at the right time. You can see the little bits of red and the little bits of grey, and there's a touch of ochre there. So. Yes. You yeah. get the idea. It's a white square with... White lines of yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and there are two other friends involved. There's Mark and Ivan. Yeah. And Mark is horrified that um, his friend has spent this huge amount of money. And he's quite, almost quite snobbish about the fact that his friend has spent all this money on this, this what he sees as a pointless thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there's a third friend called Ivan who's kind of in between. And he's got his own issues. And he, they're just it's just about the tension in that friendship group that is brought yeah. to light by this... Um, purchase so well. making this, yeah. this purchase which and changes the way that they see each other yeah yeah so it's a play about male friendship yeah and it's a play about how we understand contemporary art perhaps or how we value yeah. it yeah yeah um, yeah interestingly i say the art is almost like a secondary thing yes oh definitely, definitely. it's definitely. more the, about the, the friendship it, it's 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 about blokes having trouble talking to each other yeah and it's, <laughs> it's just quite an old theme yeah. that one yeah mark is a really unlikable character and he's oh, really unpleasant yes. but i did find things about his reaction relatable yeah. in that i hate that word 
No, you so. don't hate that word. Jason hates that word and you have absorbed it from him. Oh, okay. I, I think it's a perfectly acceptable word Fine. to use. I find aspects of his character relatable because... Because? This is part of a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Very it's fun. literary snobbery <laughs> words that we can use. Um, sorry. No. Um, because it's that sense that you can have of, the, of almost betrayal when you have a, a, a friend who's very dear to you when they do something that is completely not what you expect of them. Yes. And you feel like you've somehow been let down because you had this vision that has then been destroyed. Like he thinks of his friend Serge as being like this kind of like, um, potentially this kind of sensible down to earth guy who who values his own his, mark value who values Mark's opinion and then it turns out that yeah. he wants to be a connoisseur of modern art and he doesn't particularly value Mark's opinion and 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 it, yeah so it's that thing of do I really know you if you can yeah. do that have I misunderstood you and then that does that mean I've misunderstood our relationship as well yeah yeah and and he kind of he thinks that Mark's he wants to feel that Mark's kind of being pretentious, I think, or, you know, that he's got caught up in the whole... Surge. Surge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, caught up in the whole, um, oh, he, this this is a really exciting contemporary artist and he's got paintings in the Pompidou, so it must be good, yeah. as opposed to he doesn't feel that Surge has formed his own opinion opinion about and the painting he's almost unwilling to and reluctant yes. to believe that anyone can see more in the painting than he can he's yes. almost uh, like somebody says that he's becoming um narrow-minded and he actually criticizes somebody else for being too damn open-minded yeah and um, but he he's almost offended by the idea that he's the one that that potentially is missing something um do you think do you think he, yeah he, he's but, a little bit defensive about the fact that yeah He's yeah. not. Be, he's not able to grasp the depth potentially. Yes. 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 Because there is no reason to think that this isn't a very fine painting. Yeah. You know. Yeah, well, we don't know. We do don't Because we, we're just yeah. imagining. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and you know, I can think of paintings that are similar. That are similar that I've thought are brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um. So yeah, it, it's interesting in in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, so so he wants to debunk this painting, and we don't really know whether that is yeah. Fair or but not. I I think the interesting thing is that you can see that all three friends have something that yeah. potentially you could say they're being taken in by, and that they're spending their money on wrongly. So yes, um, obviously Serge has got his painting, and that is probably the largest amount of money. But he seems to be the friend that's got the most means to be able to afford it. Um, but um, yeah. Serge Serge and his painting. Did I say Mark? Yes. Um. Mark is taking homeopathic remedies and like every time something stressful happens somebody's like what's that you're taking and he names this other homeopathic remedy oh, oh and that and that is one of the comic elements actually yeah. because he, he like he's taking what is something that he describes as ig ignatia and I think it's probably echinacea or yeah. Yeah, he's, getting, he's getting the name slightly wrong because and, he, and this is to all because his his partner yeah Paula is a so homeopath it, so it's about like how how other people other friends are influencing them because yeah. like Mark thinks Serge is being influenced by arty friends to buy yeah. arty stuff and Serge thinks Mark is being influenced by his girlfriend to take homeopathic remedies yeah. um, and then Ivan has this like a counsellor which is obviously not necessarily a thing to be taken in by but when he like says things that his counsellor says you just think Mm, this is this actually like a good count and yeah. he says he's paying 100 euros twice a week to speak to this this person who appears to be maybe not Give actually helping him yeah, yeah 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 or that and 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 he's also been taken in by taken in by the the woman he's about to marry yeah he's about to marry someone that you get the feeling well the, the two other his two friends don't believe that he really that it's that it's a a, a good wedding that, that 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 it should be but her her uncle or something has given him a job in his stationery company and, <laughs> yeah and the, and then they're really disappointed in him because why do you want to go and work in a city you know because he was yeah. meant to be the eccentric exciting friend exciting friend and so it's all about people i suppose slight like we allocate people in our lives certain roles and yeah. if they decide to change that role we don't like it yeah and it's kind of like all of them are having um in the the the, the stereotypical term and i think that mm -hmm. she did kind of draw on this stereotypical idea yeah. but all of them are having a little bit of a midlife crisis yeah. when they're having a little bit of a reorganize of themselves at this point in life like one of them's um divorced two of them are in new relationships things like that that yeah. 
they're all kind of reinventing themselves a little bit yes, and then yes. do their old friendships fit with yeah, that? Yeah. And do they yeah, want them to? Yeah. Structurally, three scenes are the three? Ooh. The three, like, it, it takes part, place, like, one set with virtually no change, but it, it, it's not always the same apartment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause it moves between the it kind of flows very easily between the scenes because there isn't any scene change exactly. to do other than exactly. changing the work of art on the wall. Quite snappy dialogue, and then you get you get little bits between scenes where one of them um, kind of uh, has a bit of a monologue. A bit of a monologue, kind of talks talks to the audience, I guess. Yeah, and then there is one really brilliant, possibly my favourite bit, when um, one character Ivan arrives late. The other two are irritated because he's late and he just goes off on one. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and he just talks for like kind of, uh, I'll, uh, yeah. Yeah, for like two pages. Two, two, two pages of like, you know, um, just, yeah, suddenly, suddenly it goes from dialogue to this. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it seems, it's the kind of thing that people do, you know, yeah. they, they arrive late and they make their excuses and they're like, oh, you never want, you want to hear about the most ridiculous thing that happened to me today. No, no, just, no, 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 he doesn't no. really acknowledge the atmosphere in the room that he comes yeah, into. Yeah. He just down, downloads his entire problem, <laughs> everything. Yeah, to his friends, which, which is perhaps which what you might reasonably expect to do with your friends. And be supportive to mm-hmm. you. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, I, yeah, so, so the sort of structure worked for me. That I I did find it kind of clever a lot of the the dialogue. Yeah. I I don't require characters to be likable. No, but I think Alf summed it up. Um, Alf was thinking was maybe going to join us for this video, but he read half of the play and he said, "Well, it's all about these three men and their interactions, and I don't care about either." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and and so yes, as I say, I I I don't need them to be likable, but I wasn't that interested in them. Is as which is basically what yeah. Alf was rightly saying. And but I do feel if I saw a performance, it might be better. I might be interested in them because I did. There were moments when I started to kind of feel in, a yeah, little bit of empathy, yeah, yeah, or a little bit of interest in their interrelationships, and and I do find. Like male friendships intriguing because mm. an awful lot of now well you can comment men in in the comments but an awful lot of men I know don't seem to have the kind of close friends that the women I know have and yeah. don't have the kind of close friends that these yeah. men seem to be yeah so yeah that. Yes, except that then you're not sure how close they really are. Or the... Yeah, because you don't know how much they tend to meet up. Yeah. Oh, or how honest they are with each other. Mm. I mean, I think that's almost the conclusion, isn't it? Yeah, that, that they have to be a little bit dishonest with each other. or In order to keep this friendship going that has a purpose for them. Somehow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I think compared to all of the other plays that we've read so far this year, uh-huh. this one... It's not my favourite. It also, <laughs> like, it takes you a lot less far. Like, it doesn't yeah. take you anywhere particularly um, interesting or dramatic, and it doesn't take you anywhere particularly strongly, uh, strong emotionally. So there's there's not really much adventure and there's not me- really much drama. It's it's like smart comedy of manners with a bit of... it's yeah. a, With a bit of intellectual interest because of the whole contemporary oh, art stuff yeah. and a little bit of... Um, uh, yeah, human relationships, but it yes, yeah, yeah, I, it, uh, yes. So, not a strong recommend, even though. But I, I would be curious to see it. Oh, I, I would if I if I, I think if it I, must work better on stage. Absolutely, because it's 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 well, it were, this is like um, Serge and him buying this art because the Pompidou has three paintings by this. You know, I'm saying it must be good because you know it's got all these awards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> of course that isn't true. Of course that isn't true. <laughs> but must, I bet it, it must be good because true. the Times said it's remarkably wise, witty, and intelligent. Exactly. <laughs> that touches a universal nerve. <laughs> so do you think? Do you think if we were, if you and I were male, which obviously we're not, mm. we might have responded differently to this? Point? I don't know because it's written by a woman. <gasps> obviously, it's translated by a man, so he may well have uh, yeah. made ad- adaptations as he saw fit. 
Um, but because I, yeah, I thought, like, I almost wondered if, if, I, if I were a man, I might have been offended at how she's written these men. You see, it's like slightly emotionally dim. Yeah, yeah, emotionally. <laughs> Yes. Inept. Inept and underdeveloped. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's, yeah, I don't know whether... And maybe somebody who is a man, who has male friends, could read this and tell us, yes. you know, if it's if it's any good. Well, we tried. Yes. We've got Alf, but he gave he up did, halfway gave up, through. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Should we summarise there? Should we stop Let, there? Because... Let's stop there. I think we've said enough about this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, um... But thank you for joining us for another discussing drama. And I have to say, for the purposes of discussing drama, it was a good one to do because we've done so many plays that either we, we one or the other of us already knew and liked, or that were his, uh, historic dramas yeah. like the Mrs. Inchbold. Yeah. So you know, and this is very modern. This is written in, initially in nineteen ninety four. Yeah. And the the other very modern one we did was I forgot the nine night. Nine night. That, that, that was brilliant. That was just so good. So good. So good. I said, but that was a much more female play. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and very sort of and more emotional. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So so this was a good contrast. Yeah. And and um And next month things are definitely gonna get better because it is of course Shake Tube, so we'll be reading a Shakespeare so play. Um so we'll pick one of the ones that's on the selection. We've got some ideas. We already. have we have we have some plans. We'll yeah. we'll we'll see. Yeah. So we'll make a discussing drama that's linked to Shake Tube. Yeah. So have a happy happy month. Yeah. And um See you in September. See you in Except September. Except we'll see you every week on our own vi- on our normal videos. But, yeah. you know. but this is our monthly thing. Yeah. Bye.